Hey everybody, my name is Tim and this is another Real Ideal Gear Review. Today we're going to be looking at the Casio MRW200. I call it the Magpie. I've had this watch for a little while now. I've been wearing it to work, um, doing my lawn business work. And I really like this dial. I really like this watch. It's an easy watch to read. It has a lot of great features to it. No issues with water at all because of the water resistance rating on here. Uh, quartz movement, so reliable, tough. It, it can take a beating, as you've seen from my uh, Casio F200 uh, two-part series. Um, so to me, this is a great, great budget watch. $22. It's hard to beat something that's 22 bucks that has all, the, all these features. So let's get, the, let's get going on this review. We'll go through size, fitment, finish, accuracy, and then legibility and loom. So size, this watch is lightweight. It is an easy one to wear. It, it reminds me a lot of the lightest dive watch that you've ever put on your wrist. And it is that. It's just under 60 grams. Uh, the size of the dial is 43 millimeters. The height off the wrist is 12. So the proportions on this, I really like the proportions of it. The bezel, I wish the bezel size was a little bit smaller. Um, we'll get more into that when it comes down to legibility. Uh, I prefer a, just a little bit bigger dial if, you, if they can pull it off. So that's one size factor, one size measurement I think could have been just a little bit smaller, but it's kind of your typical bezel for a dive watch anyway. So for a plastic or resin dive watch, this the, the size on this is great. The proportions of this watch are fantastic. Let's talk about fitment. Casio's fitment, of course, I am not a fan of their uh, straps when it comes down to fitment. They're usually a little bit too big, or a little bit too small. Rarely do I get one that fits just right. Um, and then, of course, you go out and do something or you, you sit down and relax for a while and it all changes anyway. So, um, But I just wish there was a little bit more refinement in the fitment of the strap as far as the, the holes. Just a little bit closer together. Maybe get one more hole in there. I think that would be great. Um, it does have a ratcheting, um, what I call a ratcheting strap, so that your keeper does not uh, slide all over the place. So that is a great feature. I love that. There's a few watches that I've that I've reviewed that don't have this feature and it's noticeable. That keeper slides all over the watch. Sometimes it slides out so that the the tag end of your, your strap is sticking way out. So um, that little ratcheting keeper is perfect. I think it's great. You'll see that a lot in the G-Shocks. This one's got it. So I think it's going to be a, a great, it has been a great fit and a great use when it comes down to keeping the, the excess strap close to your wrist. Uh, finish. Love the finish. It's a typical resin finish. There's not a lot of you know, you know, uh, flash to this. So it's, it's your typical kind of dull matte finish that, that most Casios have. And I like that. I, I think it's just very subdued. This is a watch. I would wear this traveling, you know, the cost of it, $22 on Amazon is what I paid for it. Um, you know, this watch gets heisted from you. Not a big deal. You know, it's not worth fighting over. At the same time, it looks really nice and, you know, matte finish black. This is great. You know, I could wear this out hunting um, when I'm doing some nighttime hunting for coyotes and things like that. Um, but that's, or, you know, if I was still in the reserves uh, in law enforcement, this would be a great watch for that as well because it's matte finish. It's basically a blackout with the exception of you've got a red little uh, triangle here at the top of the bezel that you can rotate. And this is a bi-directional bezel, okay? So as far as the finish goes on there, great finish. Um, the bezel is, is nice. It's a friction bezel, so there's no clicking, which in some ways I kind of like it. It's the right amount of friction as well. So it doesn't, doesn't move real easily. At the same time, it's not super tight and super hard to move. There's a little bit of, of uh, so there's a few ridges on the bezel that you can grab onto with your hands, with your fingers. Um, so it's not bad. It's at the uh, the quarter hour positions. It's where you, you can kind of grab onto that. That's enough. I don't you don't need you don't need to have all the knurling or all the uh, grooves in there that a lot of the dive watches have. So I like the bezel. I think the finish of the bezel is good. I like the fact that the bezel has 15 minute increments. Your 15, 30. And 45 are larger numbers. That's great. It just makes orientation of your bezel. When you turn the bezel, and you and that's the one thing I, when I'm timing something, you turn the bezel and it's not oriented where 12 is up. Um, it could be whatever side, down, upside down, whatever. Those numbers actually will help too. So as long, I mean, you, you got the red pip at the top 
which is great. Um, but then you've also got the numbers that help orient even faster. So overall finish, I like it. You know, it's the typical Casio under $50 finish, but I think it's, I think it's gonna work out great. It's not the thickest strap in the world. It is pliable. You know, it's not one that's, you know, super stiff. Um, and it's pliable enough to where if you hook it on something, it'll probably withstand it. Um, and you know that these Casios, they can take a beating again. That video that I've done on the F200 and, and running it through its, its courses for drop testing and heat and water and impact and all that, uh, these things take a beating. Um, so I'm, I'm pleased with the finish of this watch. Accuracy, it's a quartz movement. You're not going to have any issues with, with accuracy on this one. I think it's plus or, 20, plus or minus 20 seconds a month. A month, you know, so you're talking about less than one second a day. Most of them are a little bit better than that. So that's kind of the, the lawyerly range that you hear from or see on the, on the publications. But usually they're inside of that. So I think it's going to be fine. I haven't any, had any issues with the, with the time over the few weeks that I've had it. I've set it and it's been accurate. I haven't changed it since. So that's good. All right. Legibility and loom. Um, there is no light on here, but legibility is really good. I like this watch. I like the legibility. I wish the bezel was just a little bit thinner and the dial a little bit bigger. That's the only, when it comes down to legibility, it's the only thing that I have that I think really I'd, I'd like to see. The hour hand is bigger than the minute hand. Really easy, really, really easy to tell which one is which, especially when the dial gets smaller. When the dial gets smaller, you want those two hands to be distinct from each other. And when I do the quick glance, it's, you know, you, you take a quick look at the watch, where's the hour hand, where's the minute hand, and then, you know, you tell the time. So that to me is, is the legibility test. Hour hands or the hour markers are great. It has the 24 hours written underneath uh, each of the hour markers, which is helpful. Day date is in white, which goes along with the hours, the hour markers. I think it's, it just, it all fits really well together. Um, and again, the legibility in the bezel is perfect. I love the legibility on there. So when it comes down to the overall legibility of this watch, outstanding. Now, what about Loom? Uh, this is cheap. It's a $22 watch. So, you know, guard your, your opinions on the legend or the loom on this watch. It just doesn't have that long lasting loom. Okay. Is it outstanding? Not, not even close. There's better watches out there, but remember $22 keep, keep things in perspective. All right. What do we have for the summary? hundred meters of water resistance, great proportion. You have a bezel that you can move either direction. It's friction, but it's the, it's the perfect amount of tension on this watch. I can't say for all watches, but for this watch, perfect tension. You have the push pull crown, and uh, easy to set the time. Uh, the day date is great, easy to read. Um, mineral, mineral crystal, so if it, it is something that gets scratched, get some poly watch out, wipe it out, you know, rub it down. It, it should uh, take those minor scratches out. Strap is, is okay, it's normal, it's the typical you know, quality strap you're gonna get from Casio at $22. Um, I don't know, this, this to me has just about everything I'm looking for. Loom is the only thing that I, that I would say, mm, I, you know, I don't know if this thing really, you know, gets a, deserves a lot of attention with, with wearing it. This is a great work watch. This is a great casual watch when you don't know exactly what you're going to get into. Maybe you're going to be hanging out with some buddies and, and the next thing you know, you're out cow tipping, you know? So I, I think this is something that, uh, definitely could use just a little bit more loom. Um, I have to ding it on the strap. I always do in the Casios, like if Casio's watching this, make the holes just a little bit closer together. Um, it just helps us, you know, get a, a, a finer tuned fit on our wrist, okay? But the ratcheting keeper is great. So overall, this is a 9.7 out of 10. Highly recommend this watch. The battery on this is the three-year battery. Not the best, but again, $22. Got to keep things in perspective. Loom, not the best. Keep in perspective. But $22, I highly, highly, highly recommend this analog watch. I know there's a bunch out there, but for me, this one, I'm going to hang on to this one. This one is going to be the keeper, and it's going to be one that I'm going to measure other cheap analog watches by when it comes down to some of the quality. So there you go. That's the review for the Casio MRW200, the Magpie. My name is Tim. This has been a Real Ideal Gear Review, and we'll catch you guys next time.